Let's get your home loan rate down. We understand how important managing cash flow is for investors. That's why talking to one of our brokers can help you find the best loan options and a better rate. Your Finney loan expert will assess your loan and quickly spot a better option if it's out there. With access to over 70 lenders and a wide range of products, you're sure to get the lowest available rate in the market. Stop worrying about your repayments now and take charge of your financial freedom. Contact a Finney Mortgage Specialist today on 02 8866 2444 or visit our website at www.finney.com.au. This is a Momentum Media production. Welcome to the Smart Property Investment Show, the podcast by investors for investors. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to a brand new episode of the Smart Property Investment Show. I'm Grace Ormsby. One of the key things that we love to do on this show is talk to people out there and and hear about their trials and tribulations when it does come to property. And I was speaking with a colleague in the office the other day, and he was telling me all about the building situation that he is finding himself in. And I have dragged him kicking and screaming to, 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 to be today's podcast guest, Keith Ford. Welcome to the show. Hello, Grace. Good to be here. Keith, you do have a bit of an interesting story to tell, I think anyway. Otherwise, I wouldn't have, had, wouldn't have asked you to come on the show. Um, you, you are a homeowner. That's, that's probably where this story starts. It does. It does. Um, talk us through, I mean, your principal place of residence. Right. So where I live, got a mortgage. I'm I'm in like Sydney Southwest um, kind of thing. It's a it's a new development is how it originally started. Um, I built the house that I'm in currently, um, not myself, obviously, but it wasn't already there when I bought it. I bought the land, bought the house separately, built um, had it built, and that's where we are at the moment. Um, I like the house. I like the area. Um, it's a bit of a commute in to the office. But aside from that, it's got everything I need at the moment. Mm. And how long ago, how long have you had this house? So uh, it will be be, I believe, 10 years in March since it was built. Um, so it's not an old home by any means. It, it's reasonably new. We've done some things here and there to spruce it up, um, to, to add things that we didn't have originally. Um, you know, you never know what you want until you start living in a place and realize what uh, should have done this, should have done that. Everyone's got those stories. Anyone who's built or anyone who's bought a house, any, anyone who lives anywhere really has some things that they'd like to change and 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 upgrade. And we've done some of those things over the last 10 years. Um, but, you know, we are now kind of, you know, it's going to be a bit more of a drastic change. But at the moment, that's kind of where things stand. And you live there with your family. Yes. So my wife um, and two kids, um, eight and five. So it's, uh, it's a three bedroom with, it could have been... It, I guess it's actually a four bedroom, but one of those is used as a photo studio for my wife. Um, but it is, you know, it could be used as a bedroom instead. It's got a theater room, which is great for me. Um, I love that. And outside of that, it's a nice backyard. We had that, we did some landscaping about two to three years ago, got the backyard all, all looking nice. It looks, looks great. Much nicer being out there now. Um, but yeah, that, that's what it is at the moment. I want to guess that this property has probably grown in value. We won't we won't put a specific financial um, figure on any of it, but Southwest Sydney. Yeah. A decade. So without putting numbers on it, if I were to try and buy my house now, I would not be able to <laughs> I would not be we would not be approved for the loan that it would cost okay. to, to buy my house now. So definitely. So um, capital gain, a lot of capital gains. Yeah, yeah. There's there's a decent amount of um, equity in the home. Well, good on you. Uh, well, look, I mean, starters. I'm happy about it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it would have felt probably like you were taking a pretty big plunge. Absolutely. All those years ago now. Yeah, because I was, uh, I would have been like 24 when it finished building. Um, my wife, when it finished, probably was still 23. But yeah, so 23, 24 for us, um, it obviously, obviously that's a big step. That's a lot to do. Um, 
And yeah, it, it at the time, like, you know, I own more now than I did then. And still, there no chance we would be able to buy the same place. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> Uh, so many people who are listening along yeah. can probably relate to that. So uh, timing is everything. It Good is. You for, for getting in the market when you did. Yeah, we, we managed to just scrape enough by with, you know, my parents going guarantor on the loan originally. Um, not anymore. We've, you know, we refinanced at um, some point throughout that period and, um, you know, didn't need that anymore. But yeah, it 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 was like right on the borderline of being able to actually afford it. And I guess doing everything that we could to do it, it, it was a good decision, I'd say. I'm sure Phil would be very proud and impressed of you for for refinancing, making sure you're staying up to date with your loan, with your mortgage rate. Particularly, the last couple of years have been quite insane. You you sit I, just behind me. You've seen those RBA rate I, decisions. I complain every week when it goes up. Don't you worry. But I I I was just so slightly off with the with the fixing of the rate. It. it I wasn't someone who was caught in the mortgage rate cliff um, when it when it massively, you know, when someone had been almost two years waiting for the rate rises to go up and then it, you know, they jump up on theirs relative. Ours ended probably about four months after the first rate rise, so that was just terrible timing for me. Would have loved a bit longer with the uh, with the fixed rate, but unfortunately, not the case. Oh well. <laughs> you move. You move forward. You've got to um, do what you can. I mean, clearly you are moving forward. There's some big things happening with respect to your property in the next little while. We're going to take a quick break there, though, before we unpack a pretty, I don't want to say unusual, but interesting um, movement. Life changes coming up. So stick around after the break. You'll hear more from Keith Ford. Are you stressed out not knowing where to find distressed, off-market, high cash flow properties in high growth areas? What about the best strategy to build a wealth generating portfolio? Look no further. Dragon Domofsky of Buyers Agency Australia can help. With over 20 years of experience as a property investor, Dragon is a qualified property investment advisor and expert buyers agent. So he knows how to find the best deals and negotiate for his clients. Right now, he's offering a free 45-minute strategy session to get you started, normally worth $500. Text the code BAA along with your name and email address to 0405-105074. That's 0405-105074. And take advantage of this offer. Take control of your financial future today. Welcome back to this episode of the Smart Property Investment Show. I am stuck talking with one of my colleagues, Keith Ford, who has been in his house for a decade. Southwest Sydney, a pretty good investment, even though you you probably didn't think. Did you think it was going to go up? The value as much as it has? Not as much as it has. Like, you know, the basically my entire life, as much as I can remember, property values have been fairly consistently growing, like, you know, maybe a couple of dips here and there, but over the long term, you know, you expect it to increase in value. Not the way that the market has kind of performed recently. And and it's it feels like it's gotten out of hand in many ways, but yeah, hadn't expected it to, to grow the way it has. Mm. Does it change the way you will approach property moving forward? Like, has it you know, made it more of a, a thing that you're going to look at again down the track. Obviously, we're about to talk about the big thing that's happening yeah. now, but, you know, the, the potential that's out there for property investing? Certainly, like possibly. It, it's just, you know, when things are, when you've got things like rates going up, it, it makes it a lot harder to be like, oh, yeah, that's a great time to do that. It, it makes you yeah. double, double um, second guess yourself a little bit on that front and you're just like, oh, I'll just take care of, you know, looking after the property I'm in at the moment <laughs> and, you know, um, just affording that rather than looking to, for the, for the investment side. Um, I mean, look, if, if <laughs> based on my experience with how much the value has increased, it's hard to look at, in, um, property as anything but a good investment, but, um, it's, it's not necessarily an attainable one all the time. Fair enough. So, Let's talk about what we're really here to talk about today, the big things that are going on in you and your family's lives that have seen you make some make some pretty big decisions already as to 
what life will look like, not only for you, but for your parents. Yes. So we'll stop dancing around what's happening. We're adding a second story to our house, which is kind of weird um, and a bit different, but that, well, no, that's what not. we're looking at. It's not because a lot of people do extend or renovate their they homes do. and put on a second story, but not everyone does it for the reason that you're doing it. Yeah. So basically what prompted the decision is essentially that my dad had a stroke. So it was about th- two to three months ago. Um, he, he had a stroke, had to be taken to hospital, everything like that. He, he is still at the moment, he's still in hospital. He's, he's working on, you know, um, going through a lot of physio, a lot of rehabilitation to get use of his, um, the left side of his body back essentially. So it affected the entire left side, his, his arm, the doctors are, you know, he may never get the use of his arm back. Um, his left leg is progressing. He can, he can walk around a little bit, but needs assistance and needs to be using a cane, things like that. And, and when he does leave the hospital and goes home, he will need to have a wheelchair, Mm -hmm. not permanently in the wheelchair, but he will need it for certain things because walking long distances, anything like that, it's just not going to be possible for him. We don't want him to be confined to <laughs> to his house. So want the ability for him to, to be moving. But obviously when something like that happens, it, it does become a lot harder to, you know, take care of yourself and to take care of their their home. So my dad's retired. He, he isn't working anymore. He's been retired for a few years. But my my mother's still working. She works, doesn't work full time anymore, but their plan essentially and what what kind of got shaken up a little bit, their plan was that my mum would work for another two years. That that was their plan. So that they had, you know, everything required super wise so that she would be getting close to the um to the pension age and and everything like that. So that that's what they were looking at in terms of retirement, but obviously these, you know, who knows with the plans, that's still what she wants to do, but dad needs someone around to help as well, um, to help look after him, help him just assist him with things. He's not going to be completely reliant on other people, but it is going to be something that, that is a large part of his life and, and needing help. So basically the reason for the second story is so that my parents can move in with us is, is basically the gist of it. There you go. So there, I mean, before I go anywhere else, um, I'm glad to hear your your dad is on the mend. Yeah, he's um, doing a lot better. Would have been you. a pretty awful few months for you, and then to be thinking about all this stuff as well. Like it's yeah. it's the health situation in itself is one thing, and then to be thinking, okay, where to from here? Yeah, um, can't be easy. I've been mowing two houses' lawns. <laughs> so you probably that, that's the real reason, isn't it? That's it. it. Just I just want to get out of the second lawn. That that's the real thing. I don't want to be taking care of their plants as well. So obviously with that, I mean, I keep jumping to, okay, we're now building a second story. Like that's that's where we're at in the story. But no, we've got the decisions around the financials, yeah. around them actually moving in with you and your wife and, and the discussion that you would have been having. Yeah. It, Who instigated that that decision like, be, or that question? It's It's – a little surprising. Most people, anyone I've told about it, they've generally been like, really, when I tell them. But it was actually my wife's idea. She's She's been trying to get get them to live with us for a while. She's been like, no, it'd be great. It'd combine, you know, one house. Or, but what she'd been envisioning originally, she'd been thinking like, you know, why don't we put our money together, buy a larger, like, block or a larger property and have something like that be, be an option. Um, and we're like, you know, like, I might might not have the money, you know. It's very expensive buying places, all of that. Um, would the finances work? With how much we've got, how much our houses would sell for, all of that kind of stuff. That's what she she'd been saying. Like, you know, it'd save on bills so much. You know, you've got one electricity, one gas bill, one all of those kind of things. So yeah, it was actually her idea, which um, yeah, obviously surprises people because it is my parents, not hers. Um, but yeah, she's she's more than happy. But while we were saving to purchase our house originally to to do that, we were living with my parents, like both of us, um, even as we were about to, uh, even for a few months after we got married. So tomorrow is actually my 10-year uh, wedding anniversary. Congratulations. Thank you. It was, as I said, 10 years in March that we moved into the house. So as you can see, there's about a four-month gap there. After we were married, we were still in my parents' house for a little bit so that we were, because that's how we were saving. We had a, their garage was stocked full of lounges and beds and TVs and things that we were going to move into the new house. So 
we've already done it and it was in a much smaller house than what this new one will be. So it was it was much smaller and much more cramped. Now there weren't there wasn't an eight year old and a five year old involved in at that time. But you know, there'll be more space with a second story. And I'm guessing it's you guys that will be going upstairs and not your parents? Look, they they did um look into the idea of can we put an elevator in? Yeah, that's the appropriate reaction is, is a bit of <laughs> laughter. Um, we we ended up saying that maybe that's a little bit silly because they were like, you know, we don't want to disturb the way that you live, the way you're used to living and things like that. We, You know, you can keep your bedroom this way. You, the kids will keep their bedroom, all of that kind of stuff. And we're like, yeah, but dad had a stroke. And even with an elevator, you'd, you'd need stairs of some kind still and then we've got to work out where to put an elevator as well as stairs and they're like no we just have the elevator like how would you get furniture up in a residential elevator this doesn't make any sense but so we we kind of nixed that idea and decided no we'll go upstairs that makes a lot more sense (laughs) we can just change things around in the bottom on the first floor to make it make a bit more sense for the way that you guys want to live the way that you want to use things they want to make the bedroom bigger um, change the ensuite stuff around, things like that. Mum's a big fan of wall to um, floor to ceiling tiles. Uh, we don't have that in our ensuite. She's not happy with that and would like that to be changed. Um, so that's one. So everyone's got some input here. Everyone's got input. They don't really have much input in the layout for the second story because they won't be in there, but there's going to be things on the ground floor that change as well um, based on their needs, essentially, and looking at it's it's not just aesthetic things in a bathroom. It's also, well, dad's going to have limited mobility. There's going to be needing things like some um, railings. Mom's very big on, no, we need some that look a bit nicer. We don't want them that just look like they're from straight from a hospital. At least try and have them nice. So, you know, different changes like that and, and seats in the um, shower, things along those lines so that he's able to you know, Mm -hmm. use it himself and not require assistance. I think this is such a great story to be telling because we are seeing a lot of the conversations we are having, a lot of the stories that are coming through are talking about this rise in multi-generational living. Um, And I don't think the topic is being talked about as much as it really should be. And because it is already the reality for so many people. Um, I love that your wife was already talking about it and, and wanting to do it. And obviously this is not the circumstances where you want it to be happening. Um, but so many people out there would be like, I don't know what to do in this situation or even how to sort of start the process. How do the financials tie in here when you are effectively combining your asset? Like, yeah. is that what you're doing? It, we're, the way that my parents want to do it. They they don't want anything of them being on the title to the house or anything along those lines. They they don't want it to be that way. Um, they they want to they want to pay for the addition mm-hmm. of the second story um, from the proceeds of selling their house because that they own their house free and clear. There's no mortgage or anything on there. So whatever they sell their house for, that goes directly to them. And because they're essentially moving in and taking over part of the house, they they want to pay for the second story. And I mean, as I said before, we wouldn't be able to service a loan of what the property as is, is worth. So adding on a couple of hundred thousand dollars for a second story, like that wouldn't have been something that we were able to to to, to do anyway. We wouldn't have been able to service that, that size loan if we refinanced, including that. And so the way that um, we've kind of settled on on what they'll do is, and you know, there is. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of bridging loans, but it's kind of the only viable solution in mm-hmm. in this instance, where mum and dad will get a bridging loan using their house as collateral. Essentially, on that, it will be paid out to the builder to put the second story on, as in the. Um, increments as the build goes and then when the when the house is sold loan gets paid off that's that's the idea mm-hmm. so um they they were very big on that them not wanting to be on the title or anything like that and and it retain it's staying in our name now obviously when things like that happen you do have to think like you know for instance and we're not really this isn't something we're planning or have really thought about but when you look at it from this you do have to think oh what if, what if 
my wife and I got divorced? Like, mm. what would then happen? And how would it work with my parents then? Like, would we split the house? Would we then have to figure out some other arrangement or something? And so that is something we've we've talked about. And obviously, I mean, we don't really think there's much chance of that happening. But I mean, most people that are married don't. So mm. you do have to at least think about it and and consider it with amongst yourselves yeah. but you know it's it's not something we're terribly worried about happening but you've you do have to at least have a quick conversation yeah address it you got to mention it have you sought financial legal advice for any of this like is it something where you do feel like that's necessary so we have spoken we've spoken to like a mortgage broker uh, my parents have spoken to they they have a financial advisor they've spoken to about any ramifications and things like that for, for instance, um, the pension, because my dad, it does get a part pension um, in addition to his um, super and and things like that. And so the how, what the effect of them essentially getting a lump sum from the sale of their home is going to do and, and them figuring out all of those things. So, yeah, there's been a lot of conversations, um, obviously talking to, well, not a bank, a credit union for the loan. Mum's always gone through a credit union um, and it's the same one that they had their loan with and all of that. Uh, but, you know, there, there's all sorts of different conversations we've had with all sorts of different build- people as well as, you know, builders, things along those lines, all sorts. I know there's some things to discuss around the builder as well. So we're going to take another quick break. See you on the other side. Are you looking to invest for a big return but are unsure which suburb is up and coming and guaranteed to give you the most bang for your buck? Smart Property Investment and Pure Property Investment have unveiled the Fast 50 2024 report, identifying the suburbs backed by research that are giving investors the highest returns. Don't make any investing decisions until you read the free report. Visit smartpropertyinvestment.com.au to download the report. Welcome back to this episode of the Smart Property Investment Show. I am joined by Keith Ford, who has a bit of an unusual story in that the parents are moving back in. You are putting an extension on your existing home to facilitate that, to have some room. It it sounds like a win-win. Yeah. I mean, mostly, I think. It, it's basically, we, we did look at all other options in terms of, as I mentioned before, the combining of finances to purchase a completely different property. But when we kind of went through everything, the one that made the most sense for us with liking the location we're in, because like my parents' house is, it's like a 10 minute walk from mine anyway. It's not like they're far away. So they like the location as well. And, you know, everything along those lines we kind of settled on this when we had looked at a few different options. We were just like, yeah, I think this one actually makes the most sense. And then for a little bit, I was like, yeah, I never really thought that you can even add a story on, but yeah, that makes sense. And, you know, obviously you have to talk to people about that and and what the physical requirements are and and what they're able to do with your specific Mm. property. But yeah, it's um, the way that we settled on everything after discussing it for um, a few weeks was that, yeah, this is probably the best way to go. Is it going to be a true two self-contained homes or is it still going to be one family home just with a lot more space? Mostly t- just the one home. Um, so like the stairs will go up to the house, the the se- the second story and for the most part, you know, we're not adding in a second kitchen up there or or a second laundry or anything. So the kitchen, the laundry will still be shared spaces. Um, and, you know, as I mentioned before, we've lived with my parents before and it's really it's not a big problem. It, it went fine. Um, there'll inevitably be growing pains and, and teething issues when you um, change living arrangements and there'll be things that ways of doing things that they have that are just different to the ways that we do it. Um, I'm sure, you know, it could just be, this is, this is a very specific example, but after my parents make a cup of tea, they put the tea bag in the sink for some reason. I don't understand it. They've done it my entire life and I've never understood it, but they put the tea bag in the sink and later put it in the bin. I don't understand it. I put it straight in the bin. I don't know why you would do that. 
that's the kind of thing that you're going to have to deal with. It's small things where there's little adjustments on both sides to figure out what you're doing. And that that's that's the stuff that you're going to find out as you're doing things where those little friction points come. Mm. But as I say, we, we've both, we've all lived together before um, just without a couple of kids involved. Um, there will be a sliding door at the top of the stairs is a thing, but that's mostly to keep the cats on the top floor at night rather than them being on the bottom floor and annoying my parents. Fair enough. Yeah. So talk us through then the process of of contracting a builder. I know that things are really expensive at the moment, Keith. They um, are. <laughs> how, I mean, what process did you use? I, have you got an architect or have you gone down just getting a um getting pitch images drawn up like what what's been the process for you guys and and work because I do feel like you have to and you have clearly taken quite a pragmatic thoughtful approach to this so I feel like there's got to have been some thought into the design of this as well yeah yeah definitely and so in terms of the actual design there's been a couple of things where we've had these uh must-haves so the studio that my wife has for photography that's actually where the stairs are going so that is being taken from the bottom story, but it's now moving up to the top story. So what we had to make sure was that there was going to be, it, it essentially has to be four bedrooms upstairs. Mm, so Which the, is a lot. It is a lot. It is. Um, so the master bedroom, the two kids' rooms, and then a photo studio, which is essentially another, another bedroom, while also accommodating a living area of some kind. So a, a lounge room basically where you can have a TV and a lounge and the kids can spend time up there, things along those lines. And then you need to have a bathroom, an ensuite, you know, so there is quite a bit going in there. But we didn't draw get we didn't contact an architect and go that route. What we decided to do was to talk to builders and get some ideas on generally what we're able to do and figure out how much the cost would be and and let them go through their drafting services for mm-hmm. the for the plans and things along those lines and talk to their engineers and and let them kind of take care of that process um which is a cool way to do it because even just the fact that how many times have we heard of an architect designing something that physically can't be done <laughs> it is always um yeah they they, they especially they when like you're to do working this. with a place with a space that already has things that exist in it, whether that is the plumbing lines, whether that is electricity going one certain way. I'm even thinking back to a a renovation extension that my parents did where they completely put a concrete slab in the wrong spot and it required the bathroom to go on the other side of the house. Yeah. Just because no one had really thought that through and it had been architecturally designed. Have yeah, you faced to, anything like that? You've got to involve an engineer at some point, don't you? Um, so what we what we ended up finding was that we spoke to one builder that we had um, found and that we'd heard good things about and gotten his thoughts on, on what we could do, where things could go and everything along those lines, asked him all the questions that we had and let him know all the must-haves. Like, for instance, he, um, adding a balcony is one. As well, that'd be nice. Um, yes, so there's uh, we're adding a balcony at the back so that we can have some access to that from the be- ma- like master bedroom, so that that's somewhere that the cats can actually go outside at night if they need to. So that we're gonna have like some kind of netting system. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I that's my wife's kind of area. That specific should have got her um, on the show. Yeah, you should have brought her in. Um, she'd be happy to, I'm sure. But that that's one thing that you know, like, how would that work? Can this be something we can do? And yes, it is. Apparently, that's fine. Um, and so we got the quote back from the first builder, um, and we were looking and we're like, oh, this is like right up on where we were thinking we'd be able to actually afford this. Like, this was like right up. Like, oh, I don't know. Spoke to my brother in law who has a bathroom renovation business. And so he has a general idea on, you know, what whether, things cost. What things cost, whether you're being taken for a ride, stuff like that. And he was looking at some of the stuff and he's like, mm, that, there's no way that should cost that much. That, no, that shouldn't cost. I've got an, I know, I know another builder that does these things that I think you should contact. It, this seems too expensive for what you're getting. So we then we were like, okay, 
we'll hang on to that quote. We've still got it. It's fine. We'll talk to another builder. Which is good due diligence in anyway. It does. It makes sense. It's the kind of thing, you know, it's not a small amount of money that you're spending on something. You should really, you know, shop around, make sure that you're not getting, um, you know, having the wool pulled over your eyes. So we spoke to another builder and as we mentioned a few things, he's like, oh yeah, no, that's too, that, no, that's too expensive. <laughs> oh no, what, what's, why is he charging for that? No, that's too much. And so we're like, all right, so your sh- quote should come in cheaper then. So um, that's kind of the process, the point in the process that we're at now is we're um, expecting his quote soon and we're expecting it to be cheaper. We'll see if that's how it works out. Hopefully, you know, fingers crossed. Um, He's also open to if we need to, like my brother-in-law coming in and working on the downstairs while they're still doing the upstairs so that he can, because, you know, when we do the downstairs for the um, ensuite, why would we not get him in to do it? (laughs) Because he knows what he's doing here. he does great work and we, you know, why would we not get him in? Because he's, you know, family. He'll, he's said that he's willing to do it a little bit cheaper for us than he would a normal client. And we're like, all right, that sounds great to us. So we're talking to, um, this other builder. Hopefully it, it works out well on that front. Um, (laughs) as you mentioned plans, one of the things, uh, one of the pricings, um, for getting plans drawn up, um, he said that he actually uses the same place to get the plans drawn up. He's the same drafting um, uh-huh. service. And um, the price he told us it would cost for those was about half what the other guy did. Wow. So that's one point of comparison that's very direct that we know for sure this guy is cheaper than the other. So Taking you for a little bit of a ride. It sounds that way. I mean, you know, it, is it a matter of he he's really busy, he's got a lot of work, so he's overquoting us so that we turn the quote down? Or if we accept it, it's like, yeah, well, I'm making a good enough margin to make it worth my while. Or is it just this is his standard pricing and he just happens to come in a bit higher? You know, you've also got to look around and make sure that, you know, talk, try and get some um, testimonial from mm-hmm. someone who's worked with them before and make sure that the, they're happy with the work as well. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you don't just want to necessarily go with the cheapest option because, you know, you never know if someone's cutting corners. But um, when it's someone that has been recommended by family um, and I know some people who do other parts of work with them, someone who like supplies their steel, for instance, I know that person and, and they, I, if they, if they were dodgy, they would probably tell me, you know? So I have trust in that it's not just going to be cheaper. It will still be up to a decent quality, which I think is important to at least take into account. Mm, You've given everyone some good food for thought here, Keith. (laughs) I'm um, doing my best. Best of luck with that process. I feel like we're going to have to get you. This is where the story ends it, for now. Pretty much, yeah. Um, but it's, we're going to have to follow, you know, the conversations that you continue to have with your family. Hopefully your father um, is well on the road to recovery and, and the, you know, how I mean, how long until they can move in, really? Well, even? we're thinking um, it's probably about two weeks until he has he's able to leave wow, hospital, okay. which is good. That's, so that's he'll be back home. Um, you know, another thing they're looking at doing, they're going to have to get a new car because neither of the cars they have, well, one, they're not going to be able to need, they, they won't need two cars because yeah. dad won't be able to drive anymore with a left arm that doesn't work properly. They're looking at a different car so that it can fit a um, wheelchair in the boot. Mm. Um, they've been wanting to go electric already anyway. And so they're looking at um, doing that. Um which, of course, then throws another thing. We've got to make sure there's oh, a charging station true. in the garage. Yeah. Um, we also we have solar um, on the house, so that helps with the electric car. But You're going to have to put that up a level, aren't you? Exactly, and they will require further um, cabling to get up higher. Um, the installers will actually be required to come and take the solar panels and then reinstall because mm-hmm. builders generally do not want to deal with that because they're not properly licensed or they just aren't set up to to work with those and don't want to be um, liable for any damage, which is pretty reasonable, I would say. So that's another kind of thing that we have to take into account. Uh, but, you know, we're, we're looking hopefully um, mid next year to maybe like August, perhaps. It depends on if we uh, end up going with the second builder when he's able to start and what the build time is. Mm -hmm. Um, That's another thing. The first builder said around a 12 to 14 week build, probably a 12, um, which honestly sounded quite quick. Yeah, that 
the the second builder has said, mm, I, d- I don't really think we can get it done in that time frame. More like sixteen weeks. And I mean, I'm I'm not really against that. <laughs> no, it's only a month extra. We can take our time and do it right. Yeah. Can you live there while you? Weirdly, yes. Okay. Um, I mean, which it is kind of, kind of surprising. Um, but yeah, there's a period. There's a there's a couple week to a, like two week to month period when they are removing the roof and things along those lines that you, you can't. You don't want to be they, there then. <laughs> exactly. They have to um, get it to a point where they can then cover it to a standard where you will be able to stay in the house at that point. But yeah, it is something you're able to do. You're able to stay in there for large portions. But for the rest of any portion that we're not able to, we will essentially move into my parents' house temporarily and um give them a taste of give, what yeah, what give a little life preview like. of what's what what they've got in store for them. Well, Keith, this has been a very enlightening episode. Thank you so much for sharing your story. We'll definitely get you back on once that's all underway cuz I feel like you'll have a few interesting builder stories. We'll we'll very closely watch, um, I guess, the progress of that second builder's quote. So thank you so much for taking the time. I know how busy you are day in, day out. So it's it's a cool story and definitely anyone else who's listening along um, who is, you know, living in a multi-generational family home, reach out. I feel like this is a story we should be telling more about because the percentage of people in Australia that are going to be going down this route is only going to get bigger. And a lot, you've done it before, but some people have never, never experienced that. So definitely something that um, we would like to follow along for. If you are listening and have enjoyed this episode, like or review us on whatever platform that you do listen to your podcasts on. If you have questions or want to reach out to be a potential future guest, editor at smartpropertyinvestment.com.au. Stay up to date with us for all the latest on our website. Subscribe to our newsletter if you have not already and check us out on social media, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn and Instagram. Until next time, stay safe and well wherever you're listening from. Bye-bye. The information featured in this podcast is general in nature and does not take into consideration your financial situation or individual needs and should not be relied upon. Before making any investment, insurance, tax, property or financial planning decision, you should consult a licensed professional who can advise whether your decision is appropriate for you. Guests appearing on this podcast may have a commercial relationship with the companies mentioned. Do you need help planning your next event? With over 15 years of experience, Captivate Events is the expert in event planning. Our dedicated team ensures every detail is meticulously handled. Whether it's a gala dinner, exhibition, conference or study tour, we've got you covered. We'll be there every step of the way, from conceptualisation to flawless execution, to ensure your event is a seamless experience, minimising the time and stress involved in planning. Make your next event one to remember. Visit www.captivateevents.com.au or call 02 8866 and find out how we can captivate your audience.